Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to share our favorite window box recipe for 2021. And I'm really excited to share it because it is super colorful. And there's also a few varieties that are hiding that are just about to peek out. So let's get started. All right, I'm just gonna go down the line and name off all of the varieties in here so you can kind of get an idea of what's in here. And if there's something you like, then you'll know right away. So right over here, we're gonna start off with Dianthus. I have Dianthus on each end of the window box, one there and one here. I feel like Vanna White right now. <laughs> can I buy a vowel? Okay, so we've got Dianthus on both ends. So this is an annual Dianthus. It's perfect for containers. It's called Jolt Pink Dianthus. That's J-O-L-T, Jolt Pink. And it's really awesome because it doesn't just blossom and then it's done. It'll con have continuous blooms throughout the whole season. So that's what's awesome about this one. And it's nice and compact. It doesn't get overly tall. Um, or wild so I love that over here we've got scavola so there's many different types of scavola it's also known as fan flower um, this is the Bombay variety so this Bombay blue trails really nice and long there are other varieties that stay more compact um, I don't like those too much I like mine to go wild and they're just starting to kind of grow out a little bit here we go. So over here then we've got some Victoria Blue Salvia. You know, if you've been following me for a while, I love Victoria Blue Salvia. It's one of my favorites to intermix everywhere, even throughout all of our edible beds and everything. It's a showstopper all season long, even through the fall. It's a butterfly, hummingbird, and bee attractor. Um, any salvia really is. And so we've got, you know, a few of these to kind of add that touch of blue. And then right here we have Snapdragons. These are the Liberty Bronze. The Liberty series doesn't get overly large like the Rocket or the Cut Flower varieties like Madame or the Costa series. Um, this stays nice size, about 10 to 12 inches as you can see. Some hit 14 if they're you know, forced to kind of pop up against something tall. And then over here we have our Super Tunia. It's the Vista series and it's Fuchsia. This right here, I think I'm going to add in our boxes every year, if not in these and another one, because they add so much brightness. We can even see them from the road. And what's awesome about the Vista series is that it already has a really nice full mounding habit, but they're also a trailer. You may be familiar with the variety Bubblegum Petunia. That's also part of the Vista series. It was one of the first varieties to come out of the Vista series. Um, so it just really has that nice mounding habit, but you still have to pinch it if you want it to um, be even more full. So I go and I, I just go ahead and pinch mine. If you want them to trail really long, then you can, you know, just don't pinch them as often and just let them, let them go because they're not going to get really lanky like a lot of other petunias um, that you put into baskets or containers. All right, and then over here, oh, in the back here, these little wispy guys. This is the Jade Princess. This is a millet grass. I love different variety of millet grasses throughout our gardens, but this variety stays more petite, more compact. So I'm just using it more as um, a filler with that lime color, just to kind of make all the bright colors pop and just looks good against the dark exterior. And then over here, once again, we've got the Bombay Scavola. See, we're, we're making that pattern here now. See, we're coming. So, you know, the Snaps and Salvia, and then the Vistas, and then the Dianthus, and, um, and then some more Snaps. And see, it's all a pattern, as you can tell. I did the ends the same, but kind of flowed the pattern in. And the reason why I did the ends just a little different is because I didn't have enough varieties on hand to fill in through the ends. But I'm actually really happy that I did the ends different because it kind of switched it up a little bit and put a little extra party on the sides. Um, a little bit of a splash of texture and color that you weren't expecting. So these are going to be getting a little bit higher. At the end of May, we ended up having a really soft frost, but it was enough to really affect our coleus. So in the back here, we do have coleus. This coleus is Main Street Ruby, and I love this coleus, and it's just now coming out of that hit that it took at the end of May. And now that it's gonna be uh, coming out, it'll get nice and tall. It's not an overpowering coleus like I've had in here in the past, like a French Quarters, but it's actually a very nice, more compact, but taller, taller variety. So it'll, it'll be nice, 
but I won't have to constantly control or worry about it overpowering the rest of the container. So it's not gonna be as tall as you remember a lot of our other containers, but I didn't want these to take away from our newly planted landscape that we haven't shown you just yet, which we will. Um, but it kind of already steals the show with all of these colors. So um, it's not really doing a good job of not stealing the show. <laughs> but come up close here and let's show them the Main Street Ruby and also the um, Jade Princess Millet Grass here because you got to see it up close. So here's the Jade Princess. It gets that beautiful lime leaf in there. Um, in containers, you would usually keep it more at the mid level of the container or the lower growing habit variety in a container, so towards the front. Um, I placed it right here so that way there wouldn't be a bare space right behind the vista because I wanted these to trail more down. So I'm not focusing a lot of pinching right on top on the inside. I'm focusing more of my pinching on the front and bottom. So that way as it trails, it bushes out and it's not bushing here and then covering this and then this is a wasted variety, wasted money. This is the Coleus Main Street Ruby. Um, you guys are going to see why I am so excited for this guy to pop out of there. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's going to add, um, it's going to tie in all of the colors with that pinks and greens and darks. And um, it's just going to really add that perfect color accent in the back and add that height that this box really needs right now. Um, Everything is filled out so beautifully. So now we are just waiting on that Main Street Ruby Coleus and um, I'm rooting for it. So <laughs> I'm just gonna give you guys an up close view of the Dianthus, Scavola, Snapdragons, Victoria Blue Salvia, Vista Fuchsia, Jade Princess, Main Street Ruby Coleus, Blue Victoria, Snapdragon, Scavola. Victoria, Snapdragon, Jade Princess, Vista Fuchsia, Victoria, Snaps, Dianthus, Scavola, Jade in all kinds of main streets. And our other window box, if you want to come this way, our other window box is identical to that one. And oddly, the coleus in this box aren't as large as the coleus in the other box yet. I don't know why, but um, that's just how it is right now. But other than that, it's looking great. And I just want to quickly show you one quick lesson on how to pinch for those of you that are new and haven't seen our technique. And then um, you'll be on your way to creating big bushy containers and colorful containers and just having fun and creating your own patterns within your window box and your containers. I haven't pinched this one yet because I've been specially saving it for you guys. So as you can see, it already looks full and bushy, but you're starting to notice a lot of these on the outside, you know, which is totally normal. That's fresh new growth popping out and waiting to fill this box with beauty. So what I wanna do right now is stop it from continuing to grow out and now bush right where that is and bush as it trails down instead of just growing out and then falling because it gets heavy. So right here at the tip of the plant, if this gets any taller, it'll be weighted down and then you're just gonna have it fall down, which is completely fine. But I like it to bush as it falls down. So what I do is this part right here, you can take this whole part here off but if you're scared about losing a flower, which is right here, you can take just this growth right here off. Here, I'm gonna go like that. Can you see it better? Mm -hmm. So if you're, you could really take it down to right here, or if you wanna leave that bud, then just take it right here. So we're just gonna use our fingers to do this, okay? All right, so now that you snipped that off, all of the growth along here is gonna all grow out. So instead of having one vine of the trailing petunia here, you'll end up with one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna end up with 
six, seven, seven vines coming off of this one instead of just one falling down. So by just taking that small little piece of the tip of the vine off, you're forcing the growth along that vine to bush out and grow out of that. And then those grow out. When those grow out longer, then you pinch those. And then those grow out longer. And then, you know, it just keeps going on and on. And then they kind of just end up growing into each other. And that's how they end up balling up and holding each other up because they're weaved and grown into each other. So when they grow downward, they're all staying really bushy. So that's my secret. And I've shared it many times, but I know that there's a, quite a few uh, new people here on our YouTube channel. And we're so grateful for you. And we're so grateful for everyone that supported us throughout the years here on YouTube. And if you don't already subscribe, feel free to subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video and you love this combination, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click that bell so you don't miss any future videos or any future combinations for your containers and garden design ideas. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Have an awesome day.